everyone. Welcome to our midweek Bible study here at Trenton Street Baptist Church. Over the past several weeks, we've been taking a look at the book of Daniel. We're going to pause this week, uh, take a commercial break, so to speak, from our series. We're going to look back into the Psalms at Psalm 1 and what it means to be blessed of God. So as we take a look at that Psalms this, this week, you know, it's been on my heart and been on my mind to think about what does it really mean to be blessed? We, that's a word we throw around a lot. Uh, we're blessed because of this and blessed because of that. Uh, sometimes due to physical uh, health, sometimes due to financial prosperity, whatever the case may be. But in God's eyes, what does it mean when he says, I'm going to bless you? Well, that's what I want to take a look at today as we look at Psalm chapter 1. Look at that psalm. Let's look at verses 1 through 3 just to get things kicked off and see what God says about being blessed. It says, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. So let's pause there for just a minute and, and look at what it means to be blessed. You know, the word blessed in the Hebrew language was a very rich term, and it meant so much more than just happiness. It talked about this deep abiding peace because God has placed his favor upon you. And you think about what it means to be blessed by God, sometimes it looks a lot different than what we say when we talk about being blessed. Well, first of all, he says, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. So he says there's a, a separation from the world, from the values of the world, uh, from the morality of the world, from the way that the world looks at spiritual things. There's something separate about the godly person that makes them blessed. And because they've separated themselves from the world, God has put His hand of favor upon them. He is pleased with them. And therefore, they have this deep abiding, blessed state, this peaceful state uh, from God. So in His eyes, there's something that has to be uh, different in the, in the life of a believer and in the life of a godly person that's going to lead them to this blessedness in their life. And he says you're going to have to be separate from the ungodly. He says he doesn't walk in the counsel of the ungodly. He doesn't stand in the seat of the scornful. He doesn't sit in the seat uh, of, the, of the sinners. And so you think about this progression of a person walking away from God. First of all, they're, they're walking, and it's the picture... If you just want to personify worldliness for just a minute and, and say that it's a person walking alongside of you, you're walking with this person, uh, kind of having fellowship with them. Uh, before long, you're just kind of standing around, talking to them a little bit. And then if you really get comfortable with someone, you're going to sit down and, and maybe have a cup of coffee and talk with them. And he says, blessed is a person who hasn't found themselves with that kind of intimacy with the world. You know, the Bible says that you can't be the friend of God and be the friend with the world, that the two are separate. It's not talking about people. It's talking about the world system that's sometimes set up against God. It's talking about morality that's against the Lord and, and idolatry that uh, seeks to dethrone God and, and put something else in the throne of our hearts. So it, that's what it's talking about when he's talking about the world and, and ungodliness. And he says we shouldn't have that intimate fellowship with that if we really want to be blessed. Now, you can do these things as a, as a believer. Sure, you can, you can sin, but as Charles Spurgeon said, a Christian can't sin successfully. And what I think he means by that is, you know, there's going to be conviction in your life. It's going to rob you of joy. It's going to rob you of peace. It's going to rob you of what it means to be blessed. And he said, if a person really wants to be blessed, then they're going to be separate from the world. And another thing that he talks about, not only are they going to be separate from the world, but they're going to be saturated with the Word. Let's look at verses 2. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. So I can't overstate the importance of the Word of God in the life of a believer. If you really want to be blessed of God, there's going to be a connection to His Word. It is vital to our spiritual well-being. 
the daily intake of God's Word. You know, in the model prayer, uh, the Bible says, give us this day our daily bread. He's talking about that regular intake of what it takes to follow God, the bread of life. And he says, when you delight in the law of the Lord, you've made it a treasure in your heart. And you find your richest and deepest satisfaction uh, by that regular intake of God's Word. Do you have a morning devotion, an evening devotion? Do you have a quiet time whenever you spend time in, in God's Word and, and just let Him speak to you? Uh, and do you have a study time where you're actually studying God's Word? It says, study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the Word of truth. Uh, so there's something to be said about the Word of God and how we're blessed. You know, if you saturate yourself with news and media and negativity and, and just, you know, worldliness, uh, then it's going to rob you of what it means to be, to be blessed. You know, God can't speak to you the way that He can speak to you if you're throwing His Word aside and pushing it aside in your life, marginalizing uh, His Word. But the opposite of that in the Scriptures here is to delight in God's Word, to make it a joy and a treasure, uh, something that you look forward to. Uh, find you a good study Bible. Find some great devotions. Do whatever you have to do, uh, but you know, make, make your study time sacred. Uh, one of the things that I think is very great and crucial in the life of a believer is to uh, find what fits best for you to get God's Word into your heart. Uh, maybe you like audiobooks and you just want to turn on and, and put your headphones in or listen in your, in your radio as you're heading to work of a morning to the Word of God. And, and that's the way God gets His Word into your heart best. You're away from distractions and, and that's your perfect time. Uh, maybe you're the kind of person you like to go on the back porch, have a cup of coffee, sit down with the Bible in your hand, a physical leather-bound Bible in your hand, and that's how God speaks to you clearly. Uh, maybe you have an app on your phone and, and the Bible is better for you electronically. You, you, can, you can read it, you can comprehend and digest it that way. Uh, however you can get it into your heart and into your mind is the best way. Uh, but delight in that. I, I love that word that he says here. He, it doesn't seem like a mundane ritual that he's going through uh, when he's talking about the law of God and the commands of God. But he says, I delight in the law. It's my joy. And I find great comfort in the Scriptures. When you read the Bible, it's so much more than just history and facts. There are history and facts, but it's the living Word of God. And God can speak encouragement into your life. He can bring truth into uh, confusion, clarity into confusion. He can bring all sorts of things that we need that, are just, uh, that just bring joy. And He says, that is the person that is blessed. Now, why would he say that? Well, Scripture warns us and keeps us away from sin. Um, it, it shows us the way of God so that we know how to walk according to His will. Um, it illuminates our mind to understand who God is and, and how God is. It does all these wonderful things, and that brings about that blessedness. It, it brings about the peace and the joy. It is the pathway to blessedness in our life. So instead of walking only with the world and, and with ungodliness and sitting down and having fellowship in the world and being friends with the world, the opposite picture is to be the friend of God. And one of the clearest ways we do that is to spend time with Him, connected to Him in His Word. Someone once said this, that prayer is me talking to God. Bible reading is God talking to me. And I'm sure a little bit of both happens in both of those situations, but it's an amazing thought to think that God wants to speak with us. And I, I think the very fact that God spoke to us through His Word, His eternal Word, makes all the more sense that we should delight in that. God, thank You for speaking to us. Thank You for the Psalms that tell us about the real life emotions, but also how to process them uh, in the will of God. Thank You for the New Testament that has the gospel accounts uh, written down for us that we can read about how Jesus related to people and, and how He walked and how He healed. God, thank You for the book of Revelation that shows us that You are going to win in the end and shows us how that's going to unfold. And Lord, thank You for the book of Genesis that tells us how it all got started and, and how You created the world. And what a treasure we have in God's Word. Why wouldn't we want to delight? 
But you know, it's not so much just information. It says in his law, he meditates day and night. It means he thinks about, he or she thinks about the great principles of God regularly and consistently, day and night. I'm thinking about the Lord because it's the Word of God that reveals God to us clearly so we can know His heart. And he says, as we meditate upon that, and it's the, the picture of just mulling it over in our minds. That's one of the great things about how readily available the Word of God is to us in this day and age. Uh, I have an a, a app on my phone that gives me a verse of the day every single day. And sometimes when I'm busy and I'm out and about and I don't have time to, to break away and, and really spend hours in Bible consumption, um, I'll look at that verse of the day and, and it's usually a, just a short verse. So I can actually meditate on that all day long as I'm going about and as I'm having my day and, and being with other people. I can think about that verse uh, and meditating on that keeps my mind focused on Him, and, and the more we meditate on Him, the deeper we know Him. There's a deeper connection there, and it's going to change the way you act. <laughs> it's going to change the decisions that you make. You, it's hard for you to read the Word of God and consume it and not be blessed because it's going to begin to saturate your mind, and sooner or later, your mind will become the mind of Christ. You will have the mind of Christ, and what that means is you'll think like Him, you'll talk like Him, love like Him, uh, forgive like Him. You will share the gospel like Him just by being connected to Him in His Word. So blessed is he who delights in the law of the Lord. Uh, so there's a connection by uh, God through His Word. So we're, we've talked about being separated from the world. We've talked about being saturated by the Word. And now let's take a look at number three, at what it means to be soaked with the waters of God. He says, He shall be like a tree planted by rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. So once again, there's another connection here. And he, he talks about the person that's blessed and the person that separates from the world, connects to me through the Word, walks in my ways, will be blessed because they're like rivers planted by waters. And he, he, he has this picture of fruitfulness and production. Uh, a tree that produces fruit uh, is a picture in the Bible of being profitable, being productive in the ways of God. And he also says whatever he does will prosper. And what that means is God will have his hand on whatever this person does. He will give favor to, um, he will give good success to. It, it reminds me of what he told Joshua when Joshua was about to conquer and conquest the land of Canaan. He said, Joshua, if you will not turn aside to the right or the left from my law, you will, I will give you good success in whatever you do. Now, did that mean Joshua was not going to face any trials or, or difficulties? No. But he says, you know that you will be in the will of God whatever you do, and I will be with you. And, and sometimes it doesn't look like that I'm doing the right thing because my ways are not your ways, but you know that you're successful. What is success? It's obedience to God. That's true success in the life of a believer. So he says, as you delight in the law, you'll be like a tree planted by rivers of water. You will be productive. And listen, not only will it bless your life, but the people around you will be blessed as well because the fruit that you produce they will get to partake of, and they will be participants of what God is doing in and through your life. That's what it means to be blessed. Not blessed just to hold it all up, but to be able to share that uh, with other people. I think about uh, the Sea of Galilee over in, in Israel, and I think about the Jordan River that connects it down to the Dead Sea. Uh, the Jordan River and the Sea of Galilee are full of life. The Dead Sea, of course, gets its name because there is no life in it. And the reason why is because the Sea of Galilee has an outlet. It's the Jordan River, and it connects down and dumps into the Dead Sea. Dead Sea has no outlet whatsoever, therefore there is no life. And one of the reasons why God tells us to not hoard up these blessings for ourselves, but to actually pour them out to others is so that He can pour more into us. But if we just let it die with us, if we just kind of hold all the blessings of God in and the truth and, and the resources and the things that He's given us, 
then we're not really benefiting other peoples. We're kind of like the Dead Sea and we're just kind of, we're kind of dead inside. But when we open up our life like that tree planted by rivers of living water, the fruit that comes out of our life, other people get to benefit from it and they too are blessed. That's what it means to be blessed. To, to be blessed by God, but also to be a blessing to other people. So I wanted us to think about that today, about what it means to be blessed. Because we throw that word around a lot. And God, you know, we're so blessed. You've given us a home. You've given us a job. and You've given us our health. And those are, those are blessings. But he says the deepest blessings have more to do with my relationship to God than my outward appearance or my outward uh, expressions of what God has given me or, or, or just the things that God physically have, has put in my life. He says, to be truly blessed means to be in a right relationship with God the Father, to right relationship with the one true and living God. So if you're a child of God today, I want you to know something. You are blessed. Delight in the law. Get connected to Him in His Word be saturated by the rivers of living water, the Holy Spirit of God in your life, and let the fruit that that produces from your life be a benefit to others, and you are truly blessed. Let's pray before we finish up today. We'll jump back into Daniel next week, look at the second half of the book, and see how God's going to unfold future events because we've been looking at the history of what's taking place. Next week, we're going to jump into the next half of the book of Daniel and take a look at what the future events are going to unfold. So let's pray before we finish up. I hope God blesses you where you are and that you always know that here at Trenton Street uh, you can have a, a, any prayer request that, that you may have sent to us and we will pray for you. Uh, we want to help you in any way that we can in your spiritual journey. So let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for giving us a day that we can come together and spend a brief time in your word. But even as we delight in your law through this study, God, we know that we're blessed, that you've taught us something a little bit more about who you are and how you'd have us to live, and we're blessed because of it. We pray that we would take this knowledge, put it into practice in our life, God, that we could treasure it, that we could delight in it, but that others could benefit from it as well. God, I pray that we would always turn to you and thank you for the blessing of knowing you as Lord and Savior. Thank you for all that you've done for us and for all that you are in Jesus' name. Amen.